Hi traders, so I'm just going to do a quick off the cuff freestyle video um, on footprint on imbalances quickly in using today's trades as an example. Um, so I did actually get long from down here. I put it in the Discord earlier on, <clears throat> which was here. We then got stacked in balance here, auctioned on up, came back down into that stacked in balance, filled that. I added some more positions or another position. And uh, as you can see, this stacked in balance, as we came up with that impulse move, flagged back down to the edge of the imbalance. Up we go again. And then created another imbalance. It'd be interesting to see what happens here. So I added a load of positions down here, which was here. Took profits on a load of positions somewhere around about here roughly about these equal highs, make equal highs. We then flagged on back down. So I had one position running still down here. Flagged on down into this. When I saw it's rejecting from this stacked in balance, I added another position. We then auctioned it up, pulled back, and then I decided to take profits. Um, was this a form that might have been around here or around here? I can't remember. But when I saw it starting to uh, build value, or consolidate, whatever you want to call it, I decided I'd close that position out. Um, but I'll go into the footprint in a second. Uh, and also today, so today's trades, for a bit of context, we've obviously got value here, Friday's value for Friday. We opened in Asia, auctioned on up in Asia, rejected from the single print area. Right, hold on, let me make this bigger. I'm going to show you now. So, opened here in Asia, traded outside prior day's value, up to this single print in Asia, small retracement, up to this single print in Asia, coming to Frankfurt open. When I saw that rejection there, we started to reject. I had other confluences used in my other charts as well. And I believe there was, was it on there? A resting order sitting up here as well, I think, um, on the uh, market depth historical graph. So having seen that and the VWAP and the footprint swap to sell side delta, I entered shorts there in Frankfurt, took profits. I think it's somewhere around about this volume cluster here, um, aware that London was going to be opening soon. And then London open, we auctioned a bit lower down into this point of control, which is where I then entered long positions after seeing again a little bit of a stock run, I think it was on the footprint. Um, and then I took profits for 25 pips somewhere around about here. So I had two positions, so that was 50 pips. I banked profits. Uh, I did have this already marked out this morning, which you'll see in the screenshots in the Discord, this level, from where this move down happened. Uh, and then we came up into that area, as you can see, to the pip and rejected from there. I was, however, out having breakfast, so I wasn't around for that trade. Otherwise, I would have took the trade. Uh, auctioned on down, as you can see. That would have been a great opportunity as well. And that was, from what I remember looking back on it, you'll see it in the Discord, exactly where that uh, rest in order, there was 170 contracts sitting right there and they got filled. So the passive seller sitting there. And that was where the market auctioned down. So coming into the afternoon chart opening, um, I wasn't interested in this value area low because we'd already traded into this pot, which was only just below that. Um, into this volume cluster and looking to the left, I'll always like to have the profile opened up. Looking to the left, it didn't really look like much of a significant point there. However, just below it, this area did, this significant low, which was uh, auctioned on down into this order block here, rejected and made this big move up to there. So that move started there. So for that reason, I was going to see if this order block would have any interest in holding using other confluences, which um, was on the afternoon chart. I can't remember what it was now. It was a level there. And also on the VWAP chart, we're well outside the deviation band extremes. So there's extra confluence there. And then obviously the footprint was the, the little icing on the cake, the cherry on top, if you want to call it that. So I'll go into the footprint now, but this was where I entered longs. So we... No, for context, that was the order block I was looking for. So I wanted to see some clues on the footprint, okay? So with that said, I'm going to get rid of this chart now.
like so. And uh, as we can see, as I was saying, I entered here. So this level here is where that previous order block was off, which I just showed you on the market profile chart. It auctioned up, created an imbalance, came back down into that imbalance, filled it, auctioned up, created a balance again, imbalance, and then pulled back down to the edge of that imbalance, market rallied again, pulled back, created an imbalance, which we've been filling, but we're building value. So this is where I exited my trades. Let's get late now. It's, I mean, it's 10 past seven um, in the evening. And then we pulled back, filled the imbalance, and I don't know what's going to happen now. This is like end of play for me, so I don't really care, but we might auction up a bit higher. Um, I think here is VWAP. Yeah, so we're finding value of just consolidating around VWAP. So that's why we got CHOP, especially London's closed, getting towards the end of New York. So um, it's just CHOP here, which is why I don't want to be in a trade. So that's why I took profits. But anyway, let's now zoom in on this footprint. And I can't remember, was I on the four minute? See, I flick through all the time frames. So when we come into a point of interest, which we know that level was, let's call it there, on that market profile level, when we're coming into it, I start flicking through the charts to see what the volume's like, what the sell side delta or buy side delta, or whatever, is like coming into the point of interest and flicking through different time frames: one minute, two minute, three minute, four minute, five minute, six minute, seven minute. I can try to build a bit of a better picture and give me clues as to what is happening. Um, so let's, we'll, we'll just flip through some time frames, but we can see here, obviously the imbalances and how they're held and how powerful stacked imbalances can be once you get good rejection from a, from a, a solid level of interest, how they can be beneficial. Um, whether you'd want to take a low, risk high reward trade waiting for it to come fill the level but stop us just below it and just taking a punt like that see like low risk few pips below the big reward and again here or you could just trade as another strategy you could trade when you see it form bearing in mind that you know that it's only going to be probably short lived because it might get filled you could try and trade the breakout of an imbalance where you see the imbalance printed but uh, it's always safer if you get an early positions in to take some profits. And then if you, you see the imbalance, be prepared for us to flag back a nice, slow, gentle flag back, feel the imbalance, and then you can always add to another position. But anyway, let's um, zoom in on this a bit more. So we're in a four minute chart at the moment. Let me just. Uh, So coming into the area, I, th I think I was probably on the five or seven minute coming into it. Let me just uh, load up. So the five minute chart. So coming into the area, I would have been looking through the, the time frames and been like, right, okay. So we can see we've got heavy sell side delta. We've cleared my initial balance low. So we call that, I call it Asia low, but it's not because I have this as a custom setting time setting so it's not quite exactly asia low but uh, we'll call it that for the purposes of this video so we cleared my asia low my initial balance low came down we know this level here was that market profile level so we had heavy selling coming into the area of interest let's just do it that so then coming into the area of interest i would have gone through my to try and paint the picture and we can see straight away see it Hopefully you can straight away see what I'm seeing. That's that's on the one minute. You can see the stop run on the one minute chart. So you can see we've got the rejection tail. Pocket at the bottom, we've tracked sellers. Got the volume there. So we can call that absorption happening. Let me do it 
on a two minute chart. I bet we can still see it on a two minute chart. I can't remember what chart I looked at, what time frame I looked at to uh, help confirm it, but I would have been flicking through all these. It's easier to see three minutes. Just maybe it's a bit bigger for you. So this is the three minute chart. We can see, so we, we have we know on the five minutes we were having heavy sell side delta accumulating as we're coming down. We then got this classic stop run, little volume burst into the area, into my level, right? Pox at the bottom. So we got here, we've got heavy selling, loads of selling coming into the area, aggressive sellers, right? And then they meet passive buy limit orders. So these aggressive sellers got absorbed A for absorbed by passive buyers let's put a PB so heavy selling absorbed by passive buyers buy limit orders that got triggered we can see that in this rejection tail and this candle, the body of the candle closed higher. So there's all the sellers in here and coming into this area are, are going to be trapped. These passive buyers then become aggressive buyers, started hitting the, lifting the offer, getting aggressive, which I always like to think, okay, they've got aggressive when obviously we can see High buy side delta, bear in mind this is three minutes. High buy side delta, so straight away there's a change of character. Can you see that? And we've got the stacked imbalance form there. And that tells me that market participants then got uber aggressive, super aggressive, right? The market then auctioned higher. So we're swept. So you, you see what I'm on about? We had that heavy selling into the area, right into my point of interest, where we got buy limit orders triggered, rejection tail, candle closed higher, trapped sellers in here, followed by the delta flip, as I like to call it. I don't know if there's a proper technical name for it, but I call it the delta flip. So it's flipped to the buy side, Nice to see a stacked imbalance. Off we go. Now let's go through the other time frames. I think four minute was what I liked the imbalance. Flip to the four minute again. Yeah, so that gave me maybe it's over. So I'm flip, flipping through everything, right? So I've got some positions in. Stacked imbalance here. Market then starts auctioning higher. Let's have a look through the other time frames. I don't know what we're doing. Five minutes, see five minutes, you can't see the stacked imbalance. And it's harder to read this candle, although you'd say there's heavy selling coming into the area and then the delta flip to the buy side. But this is why I like to flick through multiple time frames in my point of interest to give me clues. Because otherwise, if you're still just using a five minute chart, you'd be like, mm, I'm not really sure. And then after this candle, you'd be like, oh, perhaps I will start. Or after this big buy orders there, you'd be like, oh, maybe I'll enter here. But you wouldn't know that there was actually absorption taking place there in the, the pintail. So hopefully you can see why I personally like to flick through the time frames. I know it's a bit, a bit of a hassle, but all you've got to do is just, uh, for those of you watching this, who are new to using my charts on zero, you just literally hit the number you want on the keypad. So we go four minutes, then press enter. And you can see I've done 54 minutes. Let me try that again. Four minutes, enter, and there you go. Five minutes, enter. All right, so... Uh,
Sorry. Yeah, so if you want to go switch to the, like the six minute, you would then just type six, hit enter. And you've got six minutes, seven, type seven, enter, blah, blah, blah. If you want to do 50 minutes or yeah, you just do five, zero, enter, and you've got the yeah, so 50 minute chart. So let's go back to the five. Right, so yeah, the five minute I just spoke about, six minute, six minute, you could, uh, if you're on a six minute, you'd be able to see there was heavy selling, you see that rejection tail stacked in balance. So you could have got an entry in there. And then I took profits. The 25 pips, no, 20 pips or something. At the equal highs, I just showed you it on the market profile anyway. Then I was flicking through and saw, I was back on the four minute, I think. Let me zoom back out again now. Right. So yeah, we got that stacked in balance. I took profits around here. At this equal highs, because that was my first point of potential Resistance, so entered, out, I left one running still. <clears throat> Saw this stacked in balance. Came back down into that stacked in balance. Again, we got a bit of a Kind of like a stop run again into that imbalance with like the rejection tail where investors that got long and aggressive from there then got more orders added no doubt here we can see again the rejection tail that might be called i don't know what they call that in retail is that a doji or something i don't know i don't trade retail but i think it's got some sort of name that candle of met so yeah we can see there and then i entered probably on this candle here, it might have been, um, after seeing the rejection, I added another position. And as you can see, we then got more stacked in balances. Down, filled that imbalance. Off we go again. Obviously not every single imbalance is going to play out, but if you use it with the right context, you can use it to scale in positions on pullbacks um, for a low risk, high reward trade. So there, yeah, started auctioning back up again. Let me just make this a bit smaller. I mean, London's closed now. And I took my profits on that editing position, uh, came up here, pulled back into it. I don't think it was quite then. Oh, no, it was, yeah, it was here. So I closed out here just because of the time restraints. It was like, what time? Gone six o'clock. And now what's happening? Let's have a look. Yeah, so that was around VWAP. We were like getting chopped. So I got out and then obviously you can see we've auctioned down again a few more pips. Just filled completely this uh candle here this imbalance and now we're back up to vwap uh so 
but you never know the deviation bands will be up here it's quite a flat vwap we might just slowly grind up towards the deviation bands or we might just linger around vwap for uh the duration of this session um that doesn't bother us so just So yeah, hopefully you can see the uses and how beneficial footprint can be. You're nuts if you're just going to trade it on your own. You need to like obviously have your other confluences, which is what I do with my market profiles. So we already had that solid level there. We had obviously the footprint then gave us the confirmation, stacked in balance, flagged back down into that stacked in balance. So if you missed this move initially, you could possibly get another position or uh, uh, get your position in there, uh, knowing that we'd already had a solid rejection from a solid level with footprint confirmation. And you could have had a punt here, entered somewhere around about there, a few pips below your stop loss, maybe with a view to a uh, you know, low risk, high reward trade. And obviously, as I say, we've got that balance again. I know I'm repeating myself. I'm trying to do this on purpose, just so you kind of drums it into your head. Uh, but obviously, you can watch this video back. So we've got another imbalance there, pulled back into that imbalance. Another imbalance there, pulled back into the imbalance, pulled back, completely filled it, and now we're kind of possibly moving back up. Um, but it's late in the day. So, yeah, that's how stacked imbalances can be useful. Um, I've tuned it in, obviously, the charts as best I can to the pound, and it seems, as you can see, to work pretty well. It's very useful to have, I find. Um, and I've obviously already spoken about the classic stop run sort of a scenario. With the... Heavy selling. We like to see heavy selling. We can see it on the five minute chart, right into the point of interest. And then look, that when you see that happen at your point of interest, and you know your point of interest or your market profile levels are you know pretty solid and a high probability. Um, I would have traded the market profile levels, even if I didn't have access to a footprint chart. So this is just extra confidence to add more positions or whatever. And the classic rejection tail after we've seen heavy selling into the area, absorption by passive buy limit orders. And those passive buyers then got aggressive with market executions. They're going to market, um, lifting the offer. The passive buyers don't move the market. When they get aggressive with market executions, that's what moves the market. And then we can see we had the increase in buy side delta, the delta flip. <clears throat> and the stacked in balance, which is what I like to see. You can see that on the three minute chart as well. Lovely. <clears throat> so yeah, that's the classic sort of footprint scenario I like to see. Obviously, every single setup is not going to be identical, but I've got the flashcard section in the Discord with similar uh, occurrences. Um, but obviously, it's down to the individual trader to make their own informed decisions based on the information, the market-generated information that they've got. So yeah, but this is your classic sort of what you'd like to see into a solid level of interest. Um, that's all I've got to say on this, really, because this is totally freestyled. I've not planned this, and uh, I'm going to probably watch it back later and cringe. So uh, with all that said, I hope you've got a little bit of value and a little bit of insight into how footprint charts can be useful, and especially how I set the stacked imbalances up. Um, but you just got to bear in mind that not every stacked imbalance is always going to play out. If it was that easy, oh my God, do you know what I mean? If it was that easy, we would like, uh, we would have like the Holy Grail, but 
I don't think that exists. All right, okay, uh, I'll catch you on another video. Nice one, cheers guys, over and out.